There are a lot of YouTubers out there and there are even more aspiring YouTubers out there like me. In today's world, it is not uncommon for people in their everyday lives to aspire to be a YouTuber as a career. I find that to be a truly beautiful thing. As somebody who has been making videos my entire life, ever since I was a little kid, it's exciting to know that whatever passions, whatever hobbies you might have, there's always content that can be made about it and to celebrate it. But if there's one thing that I have learned so far on my YouTube journey is that the best videos are always spiced up with a little thing called B-roll. I think there is precisely one zillion videos on B-roll here on YouTube, but since we're on the topic of niche and passion and things that we love, today I'm going to be showing you guys some examples of things that I do to spice up the B-roll in my videos. Just like any other lurker like myself, I'm around YouTube all the time and I see these guys like Peter McKinnon and Matty Hapoya and they always have that super clean and crispy looking B-roll. Now here on this channel, we tend to talk a lot about products, specifically playing cards, but all kinds of cool stuff. So needless to say, it's very important that I'm getting good products b-roll when I make these videos. So today I'm going to be giving you guys three tips that I personally use to spice up my b-roll. All that and more coming up but before we get into it please do drop a like on this video and subscribe. Okay if you haven't already that one's important. And without further ado let's roll that intro and get you guys on your way. <laughs> All right, now in this top three, I am gonna be ignoring things that are kind of obvious or a given, things like lighting, specific equipment, or even things like editing process. We will talk a little bit about some of that stuff, but if you guys want more specific tutorials, I could do that in a different video, or you could check out any of the many, many resources here on YouTube. Instead, this is gonna be more of a stylistic thing. I'm gonna be giving you guys ways that you can take the B-roll that you're already getting and just make it a little bit sexier, you know, just sex it up a little bit. And make sure you stick around to the end of the video because at the end I will be taking some of the things that we talk about today and giving you guys a example of what your b-roll could look like. All right, let's get into it. Tip number one, ambience. Is it ambience or amb ambiance? I feel like ambiance just doesn't sound like something that I would say. So I'm gonna go with ambience, vibe. It's the vibe, it's all, it's all about the vibe, baby. Now specifically, if you're doing product B-roll, you wanna make sure that whatever the product is that you have a supporting ambience. In my case, it's usually a deck of cards or some kind of magic gimmick that I'm taking photos of. And something that I've come to learn and definitely appreciate kind of the craft of is building a set around your product. Some products look good in super generic settings like with some wood and plants, and those are always things that kind of apply to a lot of different things. But then there's also more specific type stuff where you might need to incorporate some kind of uh, mood lighting, a specific color or a specific prop or specific material or texture or even items supporting that item that you're shooting so for example if it's a deck of cards you might have some poker chips off in the background or you might have uh, a close-up pad with some velvet or a cigar or something that you would see in a casino these are things that not only spice up the elements of your b-roll but also you can kind of reuse that set to get some good photos so if you're making thumbnails all the work is pretty much already done Now stylistically, this obviously makes sense for multiple reasons, but what it's really all about is taking the time to put in those little props or adjust the lighting ever so slightly just to illuminate or backlight that product a little bit more. Ultimately, world building is an important part of any story and B-roll is the easiest way to establish your environment, the things around you, sounds, people, situations, whatever the case is. And a little pro tip on this tip, never underestimate the power of a wooden surface and a well-placed plant. I think there's just something about using kind of these regular things around your house to create more depth in your image, to give it maybe a little bit more of a background or even a little bit of a foreground. And that brings me to tip number two, background and foreground. Now any self-respecting YouTuber knows how important it is to have a nice background when you're shooting. Now, I say it's important, but what I really mean is it's important to us. I know you guys probably don't care what's in my background. Now the same thing can apply to your B-roll, and if you're shooting a specific product, it can help create or support the ambience from the previous step. Now you'll notice things in the background here like lights or a plant or more lights or little objects, but it's a little bit blurry, which creates some separation between the background and me. The same thing can go for the foreground. If we have something like the microphone, you can see it's blurred out ever so slightly, creating more distance from the lens to me to the background. Think of it as layering. It's ultimately just gonna make the image a little bit more interesting if it has a little bit of separation between the subject 
and the back and foreground. Now I know a lot of you YouTubers out there are getting started on your iPhones, which is how I got started out. Background and foreground on your iPhone might not look as good only because iPhone's depth of field is very, very deep. So everything is pretty much always in focus when it comes to iPhone. With a proper camera with a good sensor, you can get a little bit more separation. It's gonna look a little bit better. However, that doesn't mean that background and foreground can't make your iPhone shots more interesting. Now you guys can take pieces of your set. So for example, something that I often do is I move pieces from my set around, like whether it's a, a plant or a lamp or a bowl, it doesn't really matter. I'll move it around to kind of obstruct the image of the product. That way, when the camera's moving, it can reveal, come into focus, and look really, really nice. And that brings me to our final tip, tip number three. Pay attention to your frame rate. Okay, now for the sake of everybody watching, I'm gonna skip the lesson here on frame rate and why it's so important, but I do wanna talk about why it's important when you're shooting B-roll. Ultimately, your frame rate determines how many individual frames are being captured when you're shooting. So ultimately, the higher the frame rate, the more information is coming through the lens. Now, I shoot most of my videos in 24p, which is, uh, I guess, the adopted cinematic frame rate. It's a little bit slower, but I think it looks a lot better. However, when I'm shooting B-roll, most of the time I shoot it in either 60 frames per second, 60p or 120 frames per second 120p now i know what you're thinking why why well listen up when i'm shooting b-roll i'm usually using something a little bit closer up usually i'll put on like a 35 or a 50 millimeter lens which is a lot closer up and as a result when i'm doing handheld you can see the shakes a lot easier nobody likes shaky footage i personally can't stand it my personal style i don't like the handheld look I like things to look smooth like they're moving on a gimbal. I don't got a gimbal. You probably don't got a gimbal, so I'm gonna help you out. When you're shooting your B-roll, shoot it at a higher frame rate like 60p or even 120p. That way in post when you're editing, you can slow the footage down, which will make it look a lot more smooth. Most of the B-roll that I shoot, I shoot in slow motion anyway because I think it looks better and it just, it's my kind of style. Between shooting at a higher frame rate and either the in-body stabilization from the camera or the stabilization that I do in post, it usually comes out looking pretty smooth. Now that tip to me is invaluable because because before learning that, my footage was basically useless. If I used too close a lens, it was so shaky, I couldn't do anything with it. This has allowed me to keep the camera moving, which keeps the shot interesting, but it keeps the movement smooth and not shaky and jittery. All right, guys, so there are three tips. Number one was ambience or the vibe. Number two was having a background and foreground. And number three was shooting at a frame rate that allows you to have more stable footage. By putting those three tips together, you can improve your B-roll and ultimately improve the production quality of your videos without having to do too much. If you want to see an example of what all of these things look like when they're put together, here you go. Well guys, thank you so much for watching today's episode. I really hope you enjoyed the B-roll. If nothing else, you can watch it for the satisfaction. Make sure you drop a like if you found this helpful. And of course, if you wanna see more stuff like this, if you wanna see maybe a tutorial on lighting or a tutorial on editing, let me know in the comments. All of those suggestions are much appreciated. But the big thing, just drop a like, just do it. Do it, come on, do it. All right, with all that being said, I hope all of you have a wonderful rest of your day. I know I will. <laughs> and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace. I hit record it.
jap, you can't ignore it. I'm transforming now these cars and planes, I'm always boarding. Just out touring down in Charlotte like I play for Hornets. When I'm performing, never boring, now you can't afford it. Champagne Perrier, finish friends on my face. 